Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Community Connections with Ryan Sauer. Super excited to have my friend and colleague, Mayor Tim Dunn, City of Lilburn, with us today. Tim, how are you? I'm well. Good to see you, Ryan. Good to see you. You look good with that backdrop, man. That's like I always make fun yeah, of myself. Nice, nice and bright. Nice, that's nice. That's my sunroom. That's my back porch. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, we'll have to come visit that when we're allowed to do that. So, nice. tell us, you, you, uh, you know, we were talking before we went on air of your experience of uh, becoming mayor and uh, interesting one. But um, what's going on? I mean, you were, you know, kind of. I don't know, you moved into this role and a lot's changed since you became mayor uh, in the last few months. So just kind of let people know what's been going on with Lilburn and, you know, Gwinnett and, you know, what I guess, you know, George, anything you want to share as we get started? Well, Ron, thank you. Um, a little backstory. I was on uh, planning commission a couple of years and then city council for 13 years. And uh, as we said before going on the air, uh, Mayor Chris decided to run for the state house. So he and I resigned our positions. And then uh, on, uh, I was sworn in as mayor then on March 23rd, since I was unopposed. Uh, we have five people running for the city council position that I vacated, and that will happen in May. Looks like we're still gonna go for May 19 for the election. Uh, it has been an odd time in uh, in Lobern for sure, and all across the county. Uh, you know, we're on a, a conference call at least weekly that uh, 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 is put together with the county and, and the cities uh, all listening to each other and getting updates. So that has been very effective. And uh, the cities in Gwinnett County have made every effort to stay on the same page when it comes to releasing orders. And uh, even now we're talking about uh, when to schedule the next events where people would be getting together and all of that. But in Lilburn proper, uh, it's, it's odd because a lot of the businesses have, have had to obviously change the way of doing things. In, in our old town, old town is, unique, uh, so different from Highway 29 in Lilburn. Our, uh, our florist, our hairdresser, our uh, 1910 public house restaurant, the antique store, uh, the distillery, Hope Springs Distillery, uh, everybody has had to make their version of how to, how to conduct business. So a lot of takeout, uh, a couple had to shut down, totally yeah. shut down. And uh, that has been hard on them, of course, financially. So we're concerned for them. The city did some things. We, we put off the deadlines to pay uh, permits, fees, occupational taxes. We put those off for several months. Our downtown development authority has um, uh, forgiven rents for a period of time on, on several properties. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to do that. Well, it, it's, um, Tim, you know, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. And um, I have seen you and I were talking before air, uh, before going on air, different mayors and different uh, government officials all really seem to be pulling together. And that's, that's what we all, we want to hear more of. You know, we don't, that's why I'm doing these shows. We, we get, you know, our national reports and, you know, occasionally, uh, you know, some statewide reports. But I know you guys are all in concert, I think, with the governor's orders and this and that. Of, um, and, you know, one thing I would ask you is, you know, this is a question I, I wonder because I see so many people longing for events to open at some point when it's safe. Um, you know, is, is there any future, I mean, then you, you might not even know the answer, but is it looking like a summertime type thing when people can, you know, have an event in the city of Lilburn or Grayson or Snellville or do we even have a clue yet? Well, that's a good question. And it, it is very much on our minds. All of the, uh, uh, city managers, mayors, events coordinators. Uh, the Gwinnett events coordinators have had their own separate meetings kind of on a weekly basis talking about these things. And Tuesday morning, I think it was, I'm losing track of <laughs> almost what month it is. But it's Groundhog Day. I think it was Tuesday morning and uh, we all got together on a teleconference and talked about this. And what we, and, and we're trying to stay on the same page because one city would not want to have a public event and its sister city did not. Right. Several reasons. We don't want to show up a sister city, act like we're on the cutting edge, you know, 
And also, what if all of their people came to us and we had double the attendance? Exactly. So th that's the problem. And we're pushing this out right now. We're pushing the decisions out until May 13. Okay. And we're all going to get back together on a teleconference and talk about it. Lilburn is trying to be optimistic about our 4th of July uh, event. We call it Sparkle in the Park. And we have thousands. <laughs> yeah. And our events coordinator and staff, of course, there's so much to have to do to get ready for that. They need a long, pretty long lead time. So we're going through all the permutations of, you know, if we do it, should we do it? Is it safe? Waiting for more information from uh, CDC, from, you know, Dr. Toomey at the state level, Dr. Arona at the Gwinnett level. So it's complicated. Yeah, you know, I couldn't imagine being in your guys' shoes because, you know, with the two magazines I have, I talked to six or seven different cities, and your point's well taken, you know, what Loganville's doing versus Tucker versus Lilburn versus, you know, that's just in our Metro Atlanta area for people listening outside Metro Atlanta, you might not know what that is, but everybody's kind of, you know, waiting until, like you said, I think that's the magic date to the next step, that May 13th. Right. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think the, the important thing, like you said, is, it, there's there's kind of an unknown after an unknown after an unknown you know and and yet these events in particular because people really want to do them and they would say when will you know i always took my family a lot of time to uh we have a place near disney world my wife said here's what i think they're going to do to open but i don't think anybody really knows exactly what anything's going to look like when the target keeps changing you know and um i mean we're going to get there we're going to get to the other side it's going to be you know we, we've already like you said you've seen uh, hope, I think it was the distillery. They, they, they came out with hand sanitizer. Right. right. Still uh, selling it. Still selling it. Okay. Uh, and, and it was a great pivot move on their part. Uh, uh, really fantastic. And then, you know, I've seen um, the Tiberius at 1910 do stuff with mm -hmm. takeout and farm and supplies and things like toilet paper. I mean, businesses are reinventing themselves on the fly. Uh, that's where this show came from. So I think it brings out the best in us Americans. Uh, but I also think we're really ready to you know, we miss we, as great as Zoom. You said you've been doing a million of them. Are, you know, it, we miss that personal touch. And so that's what people, you know, here. And so, so basically what you're saying is May 13th in Georgia, I guess, is kind of when people are going to start saying, all right, here's what may be able to happen because these events need a lot of planning time. Yeah, I think May 13th will be the fish or cud bait yeah. date. And uh, because, because of the lead time necessary, you couldn't make a decision much later than that about July the 4th yeah, because of lead time. Uh, there, is, there is a dichotomy in Lilburn. I mentioned the Highway 29. Of course, that's our Kroger, Walmart, Home Depot, uh, that. And uh, they had to conduct business as essential businesses. So they were on a different um, protocol than some of our smaller old town businesses. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it has been interesting. I mean, this, I think you said it so well. Uh, I've kind of like you, it feels like, you know, for our younger listeners to go uh, Google it, but Groundhog Day, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, you know, every day I'm like, was that a week ago or five weeks ago or yesterday? Oh. It's, <clears throat> but, um, you know, I, I do think people are longing to get to the other side of this and where I think we're making those, you know, Gwinnett, Lilburn, you know, I live in Lilburn. I'm not in the city, but I live in Lilburn. So, will that also? I'm just throwing this out. You know, when have you all talked about parks or you know things like that? You know, like even the playgrounds. Will those open at a certain point, or is that another thing that comes? We don't even know. Well, uh, we initially, <clears throat> our first response was to close. We we had to put um, construction fencing around the playground because kids will play. You know. Oh, yeah. So we can put construction fencing around that. We had to close the restrooms, which are brand new and lovely, but we had to close those to the public because you just couldn't keep them clean enough, often enough. Uh, but we left the, uh, the lawn open, but we restricted that. No pickup games, no soccer, that. It, it was available, and the Greenway Trail was open for uh, walking. Uh, but the lawn was virtually closed uh, to its usual normal uses. And again, May 13 is kind of the target date for reopening those. Uh, wait and see, you know, we don't want kids to be getting sick. It's, it's bad enough, you know, some of these uh, 
ball pits at the at some of these little fast food places you know hand what do they hand foot and mouth disease you know it yeah. goes around yeah but, no uh, no i you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy, Tim. I think you would agree. Just look at all parts of, I'm near the mountain park area of Lilburn. Look at all parts. You know, I tell you in the positive on this is, is I, I've always been saying we live in this running ragged slam buried world. And uh, I've seen the world slow down. Uh, I see people out, you hear the birds chirping, you can see people riding their bikes, families walking together. I think this will be something discussed for generations about how we as humans you know, you live through that, right? You know, uh, and, and it's all these communities, you know, the, 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 we're doing an article on you and the, the, our magazines, we have two different things, but focus on, on local community. I think across the country, it's all our communities arm in arm going through this together because you don't have all the answers. The governor doesn't have all the answers. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, we're kind of figuring it out based on the best data available. I mean, is that fair to say? It is fair to say, and, and uh, decision makers are put in the middle you know, trying to balance uh, people's health, the economy, civil liberties. It's just complicated. But you talked about the changes. I don't know if it's just me, but is the sky bluer? You know, <laughs> it, you know it, like it, it, yeah, man. I mean, I think, I do think, um, I, I'm, I think I was telling you in our emails, I have two terms. Yesterday, I got two semesters left that I'm on to my dissertation in leadership. Right. And, and the one thing I've seen, I've been longing for is, when are people going to put down their phones and have a meaningful conversation? And I've seen glimpses of that. And I'm, I'm wondering with this 60, 90 days, will humans develop new, I mean, you know, they'll keep some of the elbow. We'll, we've been long enough in this and we'll have longer to beca become a habit, you know, and say, Hey, I kind of miss, you know, having some quiet or hearing the birds or seeing a bluer sky. So I don't know, you know, I just think there'll be new things developed and uh, businesses. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, for, for me, even with local stuff, you know, we can't advertise an event that's not going to happen, you know, <laughs> you know, and so it's just kind of day by day, hour by hour. Um, but I do think it's important. Like you said, no leader has the answer. And what I've been impressed by business owners, Governor Kemp gave the orders of what could happen, but business owners have been very prudent about what they could or could not do. Have you seen that's that? Right. And the governor recently said, maybe yesterday, he said, uh, just because I said you could do it, didn't mean you had to do it. You know, exactly. I also have, I have some perspective given my age. I actually remember as a child, uh, pre uh, Salk and pre Sabin polio vaccine. And I can remember my mother being extremely concerned and me not so much. I was, you know, like eight years old and thought I was immortal. But I can remember that tension and something about the community shutting down and us having to go to the health department to get a shot of something they thought might help, you know. So I have that perspective. But I've also, in, in the current situation, I've, I've been kind of, I follow, I don't comment a lot, but I look at social media to get a, a drift of how people are feeling and all of that. And I think the, the public is pretty resilient and I don't see a lot of complaining and I don't see, um, you know, people are going like, well, I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to the whatever. And well, Tim, we say good, have good sense. Well, you know, and Tim, the thing I was saying, you know, that's spot on. I, I you know, we've got a few more minutes here, but what I was saying to whether it's Governor Kemp or any other governor, or whatever, uh, beauty of America is you as a business owner can choose to open or not to open. You could choose to go or not to go. I mean, no one said you had to go or didn't go. And as a matter of fact, many of the restaurants have said, you know what, we just can't pull it off yet. And, and you know what, that's, that's just intelligent people working together to say, we got to figure out how do we, you know, get our people safe? How do we get our people spaced apart? There, you know, you can't just flip, flip on a light switch and figure that out overnight. And uh, one of my friends, uh, she owns a hair salon and she has been all over the national news because they work for 30 days from the day it was closed. And, you know, Fox and ABC and the London, uh, England, London, you know, Times picked them up their story but they were preparing day one of how to open. So they were ready to go when it was said. So, next, right. so I, I told her, I said, every salon around the country is going to be calling you. And she said, text me and said, yes, they are. They did. But, but, you know, but that's an individual business decision, individual American decision. And, you know, government, per, government can give us guidance, but right. we have to make decision on what we feel good for ourselves and our families. I appreciate the, the governor getting to a point where he goes like, okay, there's still some question about it, but, use good judgment exactly. and also I, I will give credit to our business owners what i've observed is they are ethical uh people 
and they, for the sake of a dollar, are not going to endanger anyone. Exactly. You know, so they, they've adjusted. Well, I'll tell you, we businesses as I've seen them, man, they're help. It's like my young, middle. I have three daughters. My middle daughter says she was going through a coffee place yesterday, I think, and someone had paid for her a cup of coffee in front of her. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing things like that all around. You know, we might have a partner, and I'm saying, look, you know, do what you can do right now. We'll catch back up. We've been in this a long time together, and people are are trying to stretch, you know, and make a difference in this time. And so I think we're really starting to see the best of humanity. And, you know, I just thank you for, you know, for your leadership and your team's leadership. Uh, and I know it's been a lot coming since, I mean, it's hard to believe, we, you know, we started, well, I guess in mayor when you were sworn in and this has all been in the last, like you said, what's five, six weeks is crazy. I mean, it seems like yeah. two years. So yeah, the, first, uh, the first thing I signed was an emergency order. So that <laughs> didn't feel like I was getting off to a good start. Yeah. Welcome but to it, the job. Congru this, you know, is all, this is all personal to me also. I have, four local grandchildren, the oldest grandson is 21, and he was just beginning flight training and that got shut down. So he had that disappointment. Uh, he will begin his third year of college this next year. Uh, the second grandson is uh, having to forego all of his senior year high school experiences. Uh, the third youngest grandson uh, was really looking forward to baseball season. That got blown out of the water. The fourth local is a uh, granddaughter, and she is heavily into ballet. She now does virtual ballet. They do Zoom ballet practice. So, you know, it's personal. It is. And, and you know, the only thing I could do is uh, make a little joke. I said in the beginning of this, I wasn't even using Zoom personally two months ago. And I was like, if they had stock, I wish I had bought some. <laughs> <laughs> really? I know, I, mean, I'm myself. I know everybody's like, I went from that to using zoom and all the time, but, uh, well, uh, Tim, you, you're doing a fantastic job. I appreciate all you do in leadership in the community. Uh, you know, again, we'll have your, you know, for our magazines, your profile of you and your family and, and so forth. But, uh, I appreciate you, uh, by the way, for the, for people to stay posted with city of Lilburn, like news, is there a best website? Uh, or is it, I can't remember. Yeah, our, our, uh, city of Lilburn.com. And uh, on that site, it's, it's well kept. It's kept current by our staff. By the way, our staff, uh, I don't know, there, there might be another city with a staff equal to ours, but our city manager, Bill John Say, assistant city manager, Jenny Simpkins, uh, all of our people have worked and, and a lot from home, but they've kept things going. Uh, our permitting and all never failed. Uh, uh, code enforcement, all the things were covered, all the bases were covered during all this. So a shout out to them, but cityofloburn.com. Perfect. Well, we'll be sure to share this and we'll get a link to you and make sure those people can share it. A lot of people know what Lilburn's doing and say so they can stay tuned and we'll keep prayers going and uh, we're all in this together. So uh, uh, Mayor uh, Tim Dunn, thank you for coming on the show and thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Ron, and good luck finishing your doctorate. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, folks, that's another Community Connections. Special guest, Mayor Tim Dunn of Lilburn. We'll see you again next time.